Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Stranded. In this episode I'm going to go and have a look at some farms. Well, specifically fruit farms. So let's get on with that first of all. And also I want to do some, some work with some satellites. In fact, because I'm going past the satellites, let's have a quick look at those first. It's night time, so the, oh, so the observatories are both open and here we are. Now this is a um, microwave receiver and at the moment it's turned off but let's have a look at what happens if we turn it on. I'm not going to get on it because I believe if you, if you get on it then you're incinerated. So we simply shift right click the middle button here, turn it on like that and does it receive power? Not at the moment should do. Maybe it doesn't receive power at night. Anyway, what we'll do is have a quick look at how we do that satellite before I start doing the farm work. So let's come along to the satellite builder here. And what I've got in here is I've got some basic solar panels. Uh, I've got an ore mapper and I've got some small batteries and some data storage units. And I believe what we need to do for this one here, let's go and have a look at what I've got in my chest. I've got an ore scanner, that's what I need for this one. I also need a microwave transmitter. Yes, I'll take some of this stuff with me. As a satellite ID chip. Ah, yes, I've forgotten something. When we actually launch, oh, well, that's actually a similar satellite, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, first of all. We'll need a rocket. The other one hasn't returned yet. So here, for instance, is an ore mapper. And for the ore mapper, you need to put in an ore scanner as the chip. And then you can build it like this. And you'll see it comes down. That's been taken away. And we shall get a satellite with an ore mapper in it of ID 10. And we have this or scanner is now it's not yet linked to the satellite but it is linked to this satellite I believe that's how you do it um, we have to send it into space before we can actually use this one the other one is a microwave receiver now with a microwave receiver instead of putting I'm not sure if we need ID chips in here to be honest with you let's see if we can actually put these in here oh, we can okay And what you do is you build that with a standard ID satellite microwave receiver. We build that with a satellite um, ID chip like this one. So let's see if I've got a satellite ID chip in my store. Um, yes, we've got some here. Unprogram ones, that's good. What's that one? An optical telescope satellite. I think that was just a copy. So what we can do with this one is we can put that satellite unprogrammed chip into here. And what I will do, however, I'm not 100% sure about this, we'll take one data storage and put it through, see if it actually goes through. We'll be right, then we build this satellite like this. Oops, I the right button again. So it takes those two away. In fact, I'm not sure if it took those away or not. I'll have to check my, my thing. So power generation is 20, probably from those two up here because these generate one each what else does it say about this there's no storage because it wouldn't be used in this particular case would it so let's put those back in there like that and then put where's that go to oh not the right place put those in there for normal satellites we'd use the basic solar panels and for the micro where's it gone to for this one we'll use the powerful ones and what you do then, is you come along here and you put this into the input hatch. That's the bit I'd forgotten about on here. So we look at the satellite ID chip, this one here, number four. Put that in and as soon as you do that, you see you're getting power coming down. And I think I could easily put this, uh, the other one in here. 
it's not linked but this will be linked when we launch the satellite and then that will generate to have a look how much power we're getting in here I think I see this here touching let me just come back over here we're, we're generating 100 RF per tick which, which isn't too bad for one satellite in the in, in space that's so pretty good I think so anyway you take the power out of this output plug when it's working and then well that's it that's what this thing does right now and the third type of satellite that we haven't looked at or the last type of satellite we haven't looked at we've done the ore mapper was the biome was the biome one wasn't it so if we come back here and have a look at the, the possibilities for um, what we've got let's have a look at advanced rocketry which I can't type today and we want to have a look at scanners so we have this one a biome changer and this is the one I launched into space now to make this we have to go to the precision assembler I don't know whether I've got any advanced that one already built let's have a look no I haven't so let's quickly go down to the um, to the room which in fact this teleporter pad here takes me there right so what do we need for that one I've forgotten already it's not surprising really is it so So two copper rods, one titanium rod, two silicon wafers, and one advanced circuit. It's two silicon wafers. I haven't got any advanced circuits in there. So let's have a look for rods. Yeah, that doesn't actually seem to work on this particular interface. Let's have a look for lib vibes. Oops, I think it's called, isn't it? We need one of those. Put that out of the way. And we need two of these. And one advanced circuit. I might not have an advanced circuit. I'm sure I do actually. Yes. And that's actually an advanced rocketry. I think those are the four items we need so let's just put these four into here like that comes through and as you can see we get one biome changer and for that what you need to do is you need to biome changer remote is the as the ID chip so let's have a look at that so it's one of these and that needs to be programmed. So this is one that needs five. So we need a template, another advanced circuit, a user interface, a tracking circuit, and a small battery. It's quite a list, isn't it? So look. No, I don't have any in those. Let's have a look in, in the items list there. So we need an advanced circuit. What I'm going to do for sources. So can I say that? No, I can't. A user interface. I've got one of those tin plate titanium plates aluminium plates iridium plates now onto the tin plate that'll be that one there what else do we need small battery and a tracking circuit I don't think I've got a tracking circuit I'm with with me but that's a basic circuit and an eye vendor and a redstone which we can quickly make actually one of those eye vendor redstone and a basic circuit like this what you can do is you can doesn't really matter that much you just, as long as you've got the items in there it'll make one that was weird Right, tracking circuit. So I can put those two back in again now. Where's it gone to the redstone? What's the other thing I need to make? The 
the small battery. So we needed, I've got things in the way here, so we need a tracking circuit. Let's move these out of the way. User interface and a battery. So those are the five items that we need, I think. Yes. So what you do with those, you put them in here, but of course you, cause you can't put this one in, so we have to put that into there like this, and then we'll get the remote coming through here like that. And that's how that works. So what I'm going to do now is build another satellite. And this one actually could do with having a reasonable amount of power. I went the wrong way, didn't, didn't I? So what we can do with these is we can make these into um, advanced ones. So let's do that quickly. I need the other interface for that. And it's six like this. I think that'll make two large. Yep. Large set of panels. Put that in there. We put the, rem the unprogrammed remote in here. And we put the biome changer in here. And then we build it. So now we have a biome changer satellite and a remote. So those are our three uh, satellites that we can do as additional ones. So I've already launched one of these satellites up here, which I used last time for this. And I changed the remote and I changed the biome. What well, it didn't show you, and I really should have done, because I sort of forgot about it. Now we're in the biome ocean, as you can see from my minimap. But look at this. You'll see now we do not have the desert effect. We've got zero for that. So the target, I don't even, you see my current temperature is 14, which is ideal. And the season's bringing me down too. So we're either in autumn or spring, I think. So that's also a useful little trick we can do. So that's. We can just launch those into space. I won't do it here, of course. I'll go to another planet before I go and do that. But let's go and have a look at this thing over here. I'll just jump over that because I didn't want to land on those spongy sticks. Quite nasty. Here I built a multi-farm. Now, Nemson built one of these in his last episode. But this one's slightly different. This is not a normal farm. This is a orchard. And this is actually a chip. It's a manual for a farm with orchard on it. Now, what does this do for us? This actually produces fruit. And as you can see, the fruit that we've got in here are from the Pam's Harvest Craft fruit trees, which are on the surface, as you can see. These, and as soon as these become ripe, they'll be harvested. And in fact, they will start to, this one doesn't seem to have that many apricots on it, but I think they do sort of grow over time. So you get more, anyway, put it this way. I've got so much fruit, I don't really know what to do with it. But let's go and show you how you do this. Because to make a money, to make a farm, all you need is really a different chip. Now in here, I've got the two machines that we need. So we need a carpenter and the carpenter will make an integrated circuit board. So for that we need three gold and six redstone. So let's get those out of out of here. Six redstone. Oops. So you all you have to do is like this, you set up your recipe here and you, you put those in here and it should have power, which it hasn't got at the moment. It does have power, where's that coming from? Oh, 
of a furnace generator behind it. So in a reasonably short period of time we shall have a chip here. And if it's, this is, there's different types of chips but the integrated circuit board one's the one you really want because it gives you the most flexibility. And in here, Thermi Atlantic Fabricator, we actually make different types of circuits. Now this is turned off. And the reason you turn it off is because the power on this is always being used. So it uses power continuously, shall I say. Now this would produce a, um, a tube. So let's go and have a look at forestry tubes. Like that. Actually, this is a good page because you see everything on here. So as you can see here, this is a copper electron tube and you hold shift and it shows you what it is. So this is the one we need for um, a manual farm, an orchard. Automatic becomes an arboretum, which means uh, trees. And there are electric engines as well. Next one, this is a peat bog. Same for them. This is a tin one. Crop farm, that's basically seeds and wheat vegetable farm, iron electrode tubes, golden succulent farm and for manuals, so that basically means I think succulents is cactus and um, sugarcane. Reed oh that must be the this Damantini must be the sugarcane and gourd farm. So that's pumpkins and melons. We've got some more down here. An infernal farm. I guess that's another wood. Rubber plantation, that's fairly obvious what that is. Speed boost, this is for socketed machines. Manual farm, so that's the mushroom farm. And this one here's a cocoa plantation. So the different types of tubes will give you the different types of farms, whether they're manual or automatic. Now automatic means it puts the items down for you. And manual means you place the items or whatever your crops you're growing. So we need some copper tubes. Now maybe I've got some of those in my inventory already because I'm tend to make too many. No, that won't work. I think I just tried tubes. There we go. So here we've got say bronze, gold, iron and tin. I actually haven't made any copper ones. Let's go and make a couple of copper ones. So let's turn this on first of all because that takes a few minutes to heat up. As you can see here it's coming up so what we want to do is get rid of these and now we need is some um, it makes I think it's four at a time so we need some copper Oops, didn't work and we've got enough redstone so all we have to do, oh, I need six, don't I? No, I need five. Like that, and that'll give me the recipe, so let's make them get the fifth one. You see, this takes a while to heat up. And then when it heats, I've got sand in here, it makes glass. So you need glass in the element to make your tube, which is how this is going to work. won't take much longer and I need a soldering iron now, now we've got the glass now we've got our four tubes so what I can then do is turn that take that out and turn this off so because it, it will carry on using power and then it cools down and leaves the recipe in there so what you then do here yeah, we need a soldering iron let's see if I've got one of those around no maybe I've got one in my in, in here which is where I keep the other stuff no I've got nothing in there it might even be in my backpack to be honest with you let's see if I can see it oh yes I've got two soldering on made one because you bake the, make these things in the in the carpenter as well so for example let's have a look at this and the recipe for that is one bronze and three iron in the carpenter with some water this is this has also got water in it actually it's run out of water now because 
I was doing it manually from this from this plant here. So what you do with this now is you get the soldering in your hand and you right click it. And then you put you don't put your circuit board in here. First of all you change this to make an automatic a manual farm. Then you take your tubes and you put them into here and it tells you what they are. And when you're happy with that, you then put your circuit board into here and it drops down. If you if you mess it up and you lose your circuit board and you've got rubbish on it and you can't go back, that's it done. And that's all we need to do. So instead of coming, let's go back to the farm again. So in this farm here, when you right click this, you'll see that here I've got this chip orchard in here. If I remove this chip and put another one in its place, which happens to be the same one, of course, it doesn't do anything. But if I take it out, Oh, actually, I, the way you take it out is with the soldering iron. If I remember rightly, you sort of right click it with the soldering iron and you basically take it out like that. Then it becomes a standard one and it damages the soldering iron. I'll put that back in again because we don't want to do that. Because uh, you then put saplings in here and dirt in here. Because it's a manual farm, you don't need to do that. All you need is fertilizer and water. Well, this is a biome, not an arid. Now, I could actually change the biome here of course by using my satellite make it make it to an ocean and that would be a good a good one so as you see I've got it set to the bottom lots of trees in here and I can make it bigger so if I make this core bit here bigger in the middle it'll make it goes out quite a lot and the wiki page for forestry has got that in or feed the beast has got in what you have to do for that and this time it's actually correct and some of the previous ones, it went out a lot further than with a 3x3. So that's the manual farms. Oh, hello. A mob. I think one of you for a long time. Let's just quickly zap him. In fact, I think the middle bits aren't quite touching. Now there is something else interesting, the last thing I'm going to cover in this episode is there's a bug, and it's a very useful bug. Here we've got um, iron dust, powdered iron ore. I've got 11 stacks of how much space I've got in here, not quite enough for that. I've got space for six. Six. Let's just go over the other side here. Oh, actually let's quickly go back to that because here I've got some I think this is doing sap I think this is doing compressed sand it is yes and here it's got I've got plenty of compressed sand and I really need it to go a bit faster because these rolls are fine it's working just fine but I've got a bowl of fruit salad here I'm just going to put this in here for the time being and then I'm going to have to quickly give um, Nemson a bowl of fruit salad Like that, then he works a little bit harder. He's now got a speed boost to 5.5. Put the other two in there. So that'll then keep that going much faster. Let's go back to the to the base because I want to oh, pick up that ore before I forget. Now the bug it is in the smelter. One of these powdered ores, it's powered up, powdered iron. Well, let's have a quick look at that. This will get fixed, but at the moment I'm going to take advantage of it. So if we look for powdered iron ore. Wrong. Let's do it this way. I've got a lot of those in stock. Shouldn't have so many. That must be that must be coming to the wrong place. Okay, you have to fix that sometime. Um So here we've got powdered iron ore from next, next Nihilio. So if we right click this here now and find the uses of it, it'll tell us that this will produce, four of those will make one iron ore dust. You put it in the smeltery and it says it makes 36 milli, milli buckets. And when the bug is it doesn't, it produces 144, which is one ingot. So at the moment 
I'm taking advantage of that. I'm getting four times the ores from my from my dust, and so in here, I'm getting plenty of blocks of iron. So that's that bug. Anyway, for this episode, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. So until next time, I'm going to say bye for now.